Welcome to the Pump IOT and Remote O&M webinar this morning. The uh, you know we we certainly believe that the pump uh, uh, companies have a tremendous opportunity to greatly increase both uh, revenues and profitability, and uh, the two certainly go together. The um, the market basically is shaped uh, um, in a number of different ways. Uh, so that the uh, it definitely is a powerful new force. There's uh, demand for pump automation uh, and pump pump health analysis and performance. That's all being driven by IIoT, and the the advantage is that you are allowing a lot of expertise to be applied to any particular problem uh, as, as well as organizing uh, the data uh, that allows you to make uh, better decisions. But basically it all does, it starts with a variety of sensor technologies uh, that measure vibration, voltage, current, temperature, pressure, and flow rate. The data can be initially uh, analyzed with edge technology, which minimizes the data that needs to be transmitted to the cloud. So there are already uh, remote monitoring centers being operated by GE Siemens, Mitsubishi Heavy uh, Industries, or Mitsubishi Power System, Hitachi Power Systems, that's the merged group. And the opportunity is to receive the pump related data along with the data on the rotating parts. So where we are now, we're more at the embryonic stages where a number of very specific remote monitoring activities are taking place, but very little of it is being integrated and analyzed in a way uh, that it can be in the future. So in a typical pump system, you not only can be monitoring the pump activity, but all the valves that are associated with that pump. So. Uh, one of the points that we'd like to get across today is that a great deal of the success is going to be dependent on knowledge. And both your CapEx and, and OpEx revenues uh, for service and parts can be uh, enhanced by using this data to better design the pump products for specific applications. And I think this is a, a huge part of, of what is going to happen is the pump company has the opportunity to understand the processes and the ways in which its pumps are being used and how they're performing. So in essence, you have a giant resource of pump white papers. So as a pump company, you'll be able to demonstrate where your pump is doing a better job than the competition and obviously, therefore, deserves to be purchased or deserves and deserves a higher price. So the pump companies who do leverage this will be the most profitable. But we believe that the industrial internet of wisdom is even more important than the industrial internet of things. So the rate of progress can be viewed as one times IIoT plus two times IIOW. So just transmitting all this data is only part of the, of the, of the task. Two thirds of the opportunity is the improvement of the assets and, and operations. And to date, this is gonna be fairly lightly treated by all these systems that talked about uh, practice matter experts. But the pump companies are a tremendous source of IIOW, but only if they understand the new market paths. One, one good example is the, is the gas turbine industry because uh, remote monitoring of turbines is already common. So adding, adding the balance of plants to that is not gonna be a, a big step forward. But pump companies certainly need to understand the changing structures. If general purpose pumps are the foot soldiers of IIoT, then high performance pumps belong in the armored division. Their performance is much more critical to the outcome of the battle 
to improve plant performance. IoT will revolutionize industry, but only if it's accompanied by IIOW. So some of the IIOW structural needs include this decisive classification of all high performance pump applications. The designs and materials are all critical to IIOT success. So you're going to be receiving continuous performance and condition information about each pump. And certainly in a large plant, you could have 10,000 pumps. So the analysis needs to precisely classify pump types and applications. Only then can you compare the performance from different uh, manufacturers and different materials and so forth. So what are high performance pumps? And we have taken a little bit broader definition possibly than some, but certainly we have severe service where corrosion, pressure, temperature, process operating fluctuations are all conditions that qualify an application as severe service. Critical service would be where the pump is critical for safety, product purity, continuous operation, product toxicity, etc. And then you've got unique service, and you might differentiate between common off-the-shelf standard pumps and pumps that have to be uh, engineered for an application. And once you're engineering a pump for an application, you have an opportunity to keep improving it. If it's a standard off-the-shelf pump, that isn't in unique service, the potential to, to make improvements is going to be slower. So how big is this market going to be? Well, first of all, right now, it's about a $4.7 billion market for the remote monitoring and the smart pump, so to speak. But 30 years from now, by, by, pardon me, 13 years from now in 2030, the total industrial pump market will be 80 uh, billion, of which 35 billion will be general performance pumps, but 45 billion will be in high performance pumps, and even a larger portion of the dollars will be in those high performance. I have the rev of the gross margins and profits will be in that 45 billion. So that's going to be broken up by what we try to classify three different ways. One is the old route to market. In other words, a part, a 35 billion of that 80 billion will be sold just the way it is now. But 25 billion will be sold through different routes, third parties who are doing uh, operation and maintenance, uh, either, either as a third party or as a system supplier. But, uh, Basically, there are going to be fewer plant operators and, and many of the decisions being made in non-traditional ways. And then another 20 billion or 25 percent of that total is going to be additional revenue that's due to making the pumps smarter, putting all these sensors and things on it. So uh, the bottom line is 45 billion will be attributable to this new market. And of that, 25 of the 40 billion is going to be uh, in, in the realm of high performance pumps. So this is uh, it makes it even more critical uh, to be a part of all this. And again, it's already a four point some billion dollar market. So uh, this is uh, uh, already an opportunity. <clears throat> more than 50 percent of the market will be. Uh, shaped by IIoT in 2030, you know, that's that's up from 10% of the market now. High performance pumps will also generate higher margins and profits than general service. So they represent a way for international pump companies to succeed in developing countries. So this whole program benefits the larger international supplier or even the smaller international supplier over the local, local supplier who might be you know, selling based on price. 
um, 14 billion will be made to third parties so that the total uh, high performance pump market will be 25 billion but the market share for the specific supplier will be shaped not only by the quality of his high performance pumps but his willingness to assume a greater role at the very least he should develop his own remote monitoring center and provide analytics and wisdom at higher levels the levels as defined by Honeywell are shown in, in the following chart. They, they call them stacks and at the lowest stack you have smart sensors with the sensor and actuator with no, no or small amount of local processing and data storage. At the next level you get the edge devices with smarter connected sensor and then level three is a local system with connected edge. At stack four, you're into the cloud, which allows data to be accessed, aggregated, stored, monitored, and actuated anywhere in the world. And then at stack number five, you've got the big data analytics. So that's servers with cloud connectivity, which are gathering data for advanced applications, such as data analytics, visualization, and machine learning but at this point you have what we call the IIOW coming into play where all this expertise that the pump companies are gathering can be applied but as a pump company uh, you would be in uh, what we call hierarchy one which is you're just supplying a component such as a valve or a pump but nevertheless, you have the opportunity to gather revenues in the uh, levels one through three. Now, if you happen to be a process supplier, you have uh, the opportunity to generate revenues at four at uh, four levels. And if you're a system supplier or a plant supplier, you can take the ball and run with it, and rather than leave it for an Accenture. IBM or somebody else to be uh, doing to take uh, uh, or, or these uh, third-party uh, operators um, uh, to be the one yourself. So, for instance, uh, if you're a plant operator like Duke Power uh, or, or Luminant, for instance, is a good example right now. Luminant is already supplying services to a number of the industrial uh, boilers in the in its in, in its region. So a large uh, pump supplier like a KSB is already into it, and they and they uh, and then a company like FlowServe with automation divisions can be a level five provider. So it's a huge opportunity for those companies. But at certainly at the very minimum, the pump supplier has to design his pump for the smart sensing. And um, but if he can team up with a Honeywell, Rockwell, ABB, Schneider Electric, Yokogawa or other providers, uh, he can take the, the lead and, and some of these people can and be uh, his uh, collaborative but subsidiary uh, partner. And certainly the insights he receives allow him to pr improve his pump products for specific applications. You know, we've been following the pump industry for a long while, and we see a disconnect in many cases where the, the pump com uh, company doesn't really have uh, experts on its staff that understand the applications and can address things like flow accelerated uh, corrosion and things that are unique to uh, cycling turbines. <clears throat> uh, so it certainly is, uh, I think, a, a given that subject matter expertise needs the same degree of organization as IIoT. And McElveen has a, a number of decision guides that we hope will be helpful in this regard. Uh, I just want to go into a, a, and by the way, any questions that anybody has at this point in time, glad to answer, address. If not, just move on to an example here of the gas turbine um, and, and um, 
IoT opportunities. Uh, it's a particularly interesting opportunity because the industry is growing 6% a year, and there will be 2 million megawatts installed uh, around the world uh, in just the next few years, by the end of the next few years. And 30,000 individual units, so these are the larger uh, you know, utility size turbines, uh, require replacement, repair, and so forth. So you have already are, many of them are already being monitored, monitored for the turbine rotating part. So adding the pump is uh, certainly the next logical step. And you, of course, got intake water, boiler feed water, condensate cooling. And then a lot of these plants have actually gone to zero liquid discharge now. So you've got some reverse osmosis and other fairly uh, sophisticated pumps. So it's uh, the market for pump replacement uh, is going to be in the neighborhood of about one billion a year, and so when you add the IIoT to that, it's a pretty attractive market. But you have to be thinking as to how you're going to sell it, who you're going to be selling it to, and you have all these different uh, parties that play. And certainly, as we were just talking before, with the Luminance, the Dukes. Uh, uh, Berkshire Hathaway Energies and other people that are involved in all this, there are uh, a number of different uh, opportunities that are going to be non-traditional. See, large end users are operating fleets, uh, so you have the opportunity to deal with maybe 100 power companies around the world that uh, are going to be responsible for, for purchasing most of the pumps for the uh, gas turbine combined cycle, larger power plants. And they're already uh, have remote monitoring centers and they're already moving into the cloud. Uh, somebody like Duke was receiving, uh, had a number of the, the wind turbine companies were providing uh, remote monitoring uh, and feeding it back to Duke as well as monitoring their own wind turbines and Duke was getting completely inundated with all these different programs. So they, I believe it was Genpec they signed up with and, and got a open platform uh, cloud system. And now they can track all the turbines along with the providers and, and much of their software may even be better. So they're, they're monitoring every turbine uh, rather easily now. So the, uh, again, I think we sort of said that larger turbine supplier uh, operators of the big market. So another opportunity is with the turbine suppliers themselves and Mitsubishi uh, uh, Hitachi Power Systems just opened a remote monitoring center in the Philippines. And uh, it is positioned to start adding the balance of plants to coal as well as gas, gas turbines. And in terms of the power of all this, you've got companies like Nalco who already have water quality remote monitoring at, at a center which operates uh, around the clock. So all this can come, come together. And you have a lot of uh, people that are playing pretty actively in this field, uh, ABB, uh, Yokogawa. The Emerson is working uh, with pump suppliers um, and one of the other things is that assembling all this information about all the pumps in a system is going to be very valuable and there are a lot of case histories and other data uh, that can be integrated into the system and McElmain set up a beta site for Berkshire Hathaway Energy, which operates about 200 plants, including gas turbines, coal plants, and compressor stations. And so gathering the information on all the pumps at all those different plants has been part of the program, along with gathering the information on the other components. So another opportunity is with the gas turbine uh, third-party providers like wood. And the more IIoT uh, becomes cost-effective, the more third-party operators 
that you're going to see, uh, particularly with gas turbines, but coal plants as well. Uniper and uh, India Power are setting up a joint venture to uh, own and op not own, own, but to operate and maintain and support uh, power plants throughout India. Schneider Electric is certainly a uh, uh, very active in the pump space and has very specific programs to help automate pumps and make them uh, intelligent and take advantage of all the data that can be generated. And they, uh, they have a program that can be integrated into the cloud systems, but they point that there's, out that there's no reason to accessibly stream megabytes of data from a healthy pump all the way to the cloud. So with their system, uh, they are computing and, and analyzing the data and providing it then to the to the cloud where it's integrated with the data from the other components. So I won't go into some of the details of their systems. Uh, KSB is another uh, company that's uh, very active in this whole area, and they you know this what they call the uh, Industry 4.0 system. And um, go on, skip a little bit there. So KSB uh, has various different uh, smart pump sets here and uh, is offers a number of uh, different uh, programs that are all part of this. And one of those is their system efficiency services, which does uh, combine on-site data with what KSB claims to have deep expertise in pump operations to provide pump owners with comprehensive picture of how their pump is running. So a lot of this can be at the kind of uh, non-expert level or expert one level, let's say. But some of this data that uh, can be answered, let's say, by a KSB service engineer who's monitoring all this deserves to go to a higher level if the problems are more severe or are not easily answered by uh, uh, the people that would normally uh, be handling them. So think, of, think in terms of a hierarchy of uh, experts that can support uh, these systems. And that's where um, people like KSB need to be uh, stepping up and providing this highest level of, of expertise, where again, knowledge of these applications is is going to be Im important. Uh, so, uh, I, <clears throat> IIT has uh, computerized ma maintenance management. Uh, there's some manual input to the systems, but uh, you that once it's in there, you do have a computerized system uh, to compare the uh, and, and integrate the data that's being input by hand or manually and the data that's being generated by the computers. Uh, there's a number of, of, of area of, of case histories they have where this has been demonstrated. So Grenfell's also has remote management for wastewater plants as well as commercial buildings. And at any point in time, you can get a status overview of the entire system live monitoring, you can follow trends and report and have get re receive reports, of course the alarms, and then plan service and maintenance based on actual operating data rather than routinely. And then the sharing of system documentation can be done with system suppliers with the end user and of course the pump company itself. Uh, Salser is into all this, uh, and they're converting data to knowledge when uh, uh, normally they would have been uh, or previously visiting a customer site and determining flow and dynamic head and power absorbed efficiency, et cetera, et cetera. Now that data can be monitored online and the same service engineering expertise applied. There are a number of um, software providers that are working in this area, and uh, 
Altazon is, is one of them. Weir has a, a system as well, and it's been proven, for instance, at a platinum mine. A Florox has smart solutions for both its pumps and valves. And of course, the positioners uh, are an important part of this. I might also uh, add, so are the seals. So you get a lot of the uh, potential components, bearings, et cetera, and of course, the materials. So uh, the material suppliers will be able to take advantage of a lot of this data if it's uh, properly pro provided to them to come up with better materials. And, and this is particularly true on things like ultra supercritical uh, uh, power plants where you've got very high pressures and uh, temperatures and, and other challenges. Another uh, opportunity is uh, in the lubrication systems, and Colfax has a, a particular uh, unique opportunity because they're so big in the lubrication pump systems, and there are already many lubrication uh, pump remote, remote monitoring activities. So taking this to the next level and providing automatic spare parts purchasing, inventory control, and say, et cetera, it's probably going to be easier with the lubrication pumps than for some of the others. Now that um, that basically ends that that particular uh, presentation. But what I'd like to do next is to to um, um, yeah move to um, a specific one that we did on power plant pumps and IIoT because I think that shows the power uh, uh, specifically of what this can be, uh, how this can be done. So the, um, yeah, let's just get this into the slideshow mode here. Right. And this was a webinar that we did. It's already been recorded. Uh, we had a number of the VFD uh, uh, suppliers making presentations here and uh, the focus was on uh, pumps for the combined cycle plants and certainly with variable speed drives to uh, much better um, operate those plants with IIoT but what we said a little while ago about having these decision systems that augment the IIoT with the IIOW, we actually have within the power industry a number of decision systems. One is on gas turbine combined cycle uh, generally, but one on degasification, another one on cooling, uh, the combustion products, and another one on wet calcium FGD, which is the coal, coal plants. But the knowledge systems function uh, to empower power plants to select the best products and services, and they certainly go hand in hand with these these systems. And we're doing things like to, getting all the catalyst people together and getting a definitions in both Chinese and English of the ways that you can regenerate uh, catalysts. We're also identifying all the users in, uh, in uh, with a with an entity number and their name in uh, Chinese where that's a, appropriate and I think uh, eliminating a lot of the confusion with the, the translations of Chinese names I know some of our clients uh, were dealing with them under, under about three or four different you know, long King long Jing long Jin uh, they it, it's all a, a matter of choice as to how you want to convert something into English and <clears throat> Certainly, um, basic training is another key part of all this support. And so there are a number of uh, associations that are very valuable for not only the training and the research, but uh, for integration. And there are specialized journals. Uh, we have a, a, an article uh, in Pump Engineer uh, this month on... Uh, uh, pumps and IIoT, and uh, that'd be in the March issue. And in fact, uh, we have an issue, uh, we have a feature article in every uh, 
issue of pump engineer. But we have intelligent systems that uh, uh, try to separate valuable articles by all these different keywords and post them in the, in the system. And so the devil is in the details. And so you know, here's a good article on VFD at one uh, gas turbine combined cycle plant with severe problems that are uh, uh, due to certain uh, uh, unique aspects of that plant. But we need to find out what's happened since that uh, paper was presented. So obviously the each each pump application is unique in these systems, and it, and so part of the whole uh, challenge is to identify each one of them as as, as in its unique form. Uh, we also do the market forecasting. Uh, so how big are these markets in these in these different areas? So that and ends that part of it. Um, are there any questions at this point? Then uh, what I'd like to do is to to end up just by reminding you that we do have this report. It's uh, our NO31 industrial IIoT and remote O&M. And we're tracking you know, the sensors, the processors, memory. Uh, we are looking at all the different industries. We have 50 webinars scheduled over the next 50 weeks. And each week we're getting into either a product like pumps or valves or scrubbers or into an industry such as chemicals, electronics, transportation. And we are um, forecasting these markets in each of these industries and for each country of the world. And uh, we have a monthly uh, uh, newsletter in this area, the intelligence system, the, the recorded interviews every week, networking directories, et cetera. And I'll just uh, maybe just by close close by showing you the uh, the newsletter here. So this is the newsletter for last month, and um, again the devil's in the details and trying to determine what is being done by each of the players is something that we are doing. And this is uh, you know a, a quite an extensive newsletter and is is searchable. And it's a outgrowth of another newsletter we've been uh, uh, issuing every month for the last uh, uh, several decades. So uh, this is a, another valuable part of it. And um, at that point, I think we've um, finished our prepared presentation. Uh, are there any questions? If not, I'd like to thank you for joining us today. And the recording will be included uh, uh, in the service. And we look forward to having you join us next week as valves. And then uh, we get on to a number of different other subjects in the following weeks. So thanks again. And this is Bob McElbane signing off for today. <clears throat>